ahead of next year's election, the Northern Elders Forum, NEF, has said the region will support only a presidential candidate who has the capacity to address the nation's socio-economic and security problems, irrespective of where the person comes from. According to the forum, the North will no longer vote for a candidate based on sentiment, as the region did for President Muhammadu Buhari in 2015, describing the incumbent as a disappointment, not only to the North, but the entire country. The NEF also advised the federal government to postpone the planned 2022 national census because of the large numbers of displaced Nigerians and the nearness of the census to the 2023 elections. However, its opposition to the census has raised eyebrows, as it could be argued that it will be easier to conduct a census of displaced persons in refugee camps than when they are dispersed across wider areas. Knowing the number of displaced persons will also provide government better access to data and information on how to deal with the humanitarian crisis. Now joining us from Abuja to throw more light on the 2023 presidency and what the North has to lose with the conduct of a national census this year is Dr. Hakeem Baba Ahmed, Director of Publicity and Advocacy, Northern Elders Forum. Welcome to the show, Dr. Baba Ahmed, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Good morning, Dr. Baba Ahmed. Um, well, I was trying to reach you, but... Good morning, Doctor. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Very quickly, let's start with this meeting of the Northern Leaders of Thought. The date chosen for that meeting was uh, January 15. Why January 15? Is there some symbolism uh, to that? And then the meeting was also held at Arewa House. Arewa House used to be uh, the residence of the Sadauna. Uh, is there any message that the Northern leaders of thought are trying to uh, send across as uh, they examine the subject of rebuilding the North? Uh, yes, uh, there was um, some effort to remind the North that um, uh, we did have uh, purposeful, effective leadership uh, 50, 60 years ago. Um, that leadership was wiped out by um, uh, uh, murdering soldiers, and uh, and uh, they, in the process, put the nation in a different trajectory from which we have never recovered. Area House is, is very important to the North, is very important to the country, because it represents a place where a major historical turning point um, occurred. And um, the, one, the one other thing you didn't mention, which was significant, was that the northern leaders of thought also included uh, a large number of young northerners because these are the future uh, leaders of the north. Um, we needed them to be there to hear us speak about the past, the present, and the future. So yes, uh, um, we chose January 15th to remind ourselves of um, the history of the north, um, the, some of the key issues that shaped our history as northerners and Nigerians, and also to, uh, to create uh, a positive attitude about the future. The, the North is maybe in the gutter, but we are looking up at the stars. And we wanted young people particularly to share this vision. You spoke of anger in a really interesting context. I'd like you to explain more of that, because we tend to think of anger as destructive. You spoke of it as a tool. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of people are very angry, not just northerners, but all Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians are very angry. Uh, one of the things we are trying to do now is to raise the level of awareness of people to register and vote. And uh, a huge number of people you meet would say, what's the point? Um, what, what's the point of voting? The democratic process is not working for, for the weak and the poor in this country. It's increasingly being um, hijacked by powerful politicians and people. Um, votes don't appear to have counted. But the reference really is about 2015. The administration that came to power in 2015 to date has deeply disappointed a huge number of people, particularly in the north. And uh, it's very difficult convincing people that you, they, you can actually vote um, a different set of leadership with a different kind of characteristic and they can actually turn the fortunes of the country and the north. So um, we tell people, don't just be angry. Yes, be angry, but, but use that anger as a, as a fuel for, for turning things around. If you don't vote, somebody else will. 
And if you end up with, uh, uh, if those people will mobilize and buy votes for 200 Naira and 300 Naira and Indomie, they will, they will get into power and they will continue exactly where this present administration stops. They will do what it, this administration is doing or they will draw lines at problems and say, look, we didn't create the insurgency, we didn't create banditry, we didn't create kidnapping, we didn't make everybody poor. Um, that's not our problem. That's uh, somebody else has to deal with that. That's not the kind of leadership we're looking for. So anger, anger is important, but there is negative anger, and there is, there is, uh, you can turn that anger into something positive. We're trying to tell Nigerians that um, we can turn this country around, um, and, and nobody else will do it for, for us but Nigerians. And, and, and voting is important. People should vote. All right, you've said a lot, but let me start from that angle of the symbolism of the Arewa House. Uh, you could only have that kind of leadership because we had, a, obviously, independence constitution in 60 and Republican constitution in 63 that really decentralized power. Should that conversation on restructure be brought back to the table, one? And secondly, it looks as though everybody has forgotten about the electoral bill, you know, with this uh, chains of declarations by candidates now. And that's really very important in making the votes of the people count. What's your thought on that? Well, we didn't. We didn't. If you read our communique, um, we specifically referred to the need to address the, uh, the amendments to the electoral bill and uh, urged Mr. Uh, President Buhari to, to assent to that bill. Um, it's central to the um, elite selection process. It's very important to improve in the electoral process. And uh, our community specifically recommended that it should, be, uh, it should be approved. Nobody has forgotten about that. We can't. If anybody else will forget about it, the Northerners can't. It's very important to amend key areas that um, uh, vote buying has become a big problem. Violence has always been a big factor in Nigerian problem. Rigging has been a, a key part of the program. And uh, when, when we made that those recommendation, we debated it extensively. And one of the things that uh, looks like is going on is that the president and the governors don't like direct primaries. Um, they have their reasons for that, and we understand that. They don't want to change anything that takes away power from them. This is how they've always got power. They don't want to change it and give people the power to decide who is a candidate, um, uh, uh, who is an aspirant, and then who is a candidate. Well, if they are not going to approve the uh, direct primaries, they should approve the rest of the recommendations that are there. There are a lot of other recommendations. It's just that, by coincidence, the two that have become key issues is the uh, transmission of results and the direct primaries. And it's obvious that President Buhari is not going to approve the direct primaries. He doesn't like it. Um, he has provided uh, alternatives, which already uh, parties uh, can, can do, direct, indirect, or consensus. Um, it serves the interests of his party. It serves, this is what his governors want. We understand that. And since we're powerless uh, as a nation, why don't we simply get what we can and then wait out, uh, wait for when President Buhari moves out of power, and then whoever becomes the next president will have to deal with this issue. We must reform the electoral process. And we, we, did, we mentioned that in our communique. All right. I also talked about the Arewa House. We had an Arewa House because we had a Nigeria that you know, really catered to the aspirations of its people. We had governments across board in the regions that had power that was more decentralized, but not like the Abuja government we run today. Yeah, well, um, we went to we went to Ariwa House because uh, uh, Ariwa House uh, reminds us about so many things about the past. It reminds us about a very strong region. There were three, four regions. Um, between 1960 um, and 1966, um, we, we had a, a really decentralized federal system. And uh, again, uh, it doesn't appear to me that you guys have read our communique because we said that it is important to affect key amendments to the Constitution. And some of that 
uh, refers to refer to the issue about uh, restructuring the federal system. We said it is important to address that um, now. Now, if the presidency, if the present administration, again, we come back to it, if they don't think that tinkering with the structure of the federal system, addressing those things that limit the efficacy and the, um, the elements of justice and fairness that, uh, and the waste which uh, is in our federal system, let's wait out. Put in good people who will do this. Uh, put in other leadership which will prioritize restructuring of the federation that is not working, learn from the past, um, put the entire history of the country, um, and uh, include uh, this misadventure that occurred in 1966. Uh, today, some of the ch champions of federation of um, uh, federal system forget the fact that uh, in 1966, Decree 34 under Ironsi, actually literally just uh, overnight uh, abolished federation in this country and you clarified and created uh, a unified country. Um, that's the exact antithesis of some of the so-called champions of, of restructuring. Completely abolished regions and said this henceforth Nigeria is going to be a unitary state. Now all those are major issues that we need to consider. There's also the issue of whether you want to continue with this expensive, wasteful, and destructive presidential system. Um, it might have its advantages, but in our case, it's not working. If you end up with a bad president, um, or poor president, uh, or incompetent president, or an, 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 an feeling president, with so much power around his office, and a federal system that is so, so, um, so big, um, it, it's a disaster for the country, and our present circumstances are a very clear example of that. So we support um, uh, restructuring, but what we, what we advise is, uh, for goodness sake, let's not lose our heads. Um, there is going to be Nigeria after 2023. Uh, we pray for that, and we hope that that is going to be the case. Wait put in other people who can actually prioritize this. This is very, very important. And avoid a situation where uh, other people will come in and say, no, this is not my job, it's too much to do, um, and I'm, it's not, I'm not gonna take it up. Uh, we don't want that. So yes, if you are saying we could have that meeting in Ariel House because there was a time when there was another region, yes. And, um, and in, in one fell swoop, in one night, uh, soldiers um, from one part of the country killed leaders from the north and the southwest and, and, and destroyed the foundations of a democracy that could have developed and grown and we will not be dealing with a lot of the problems that we're dealing with. So um, I agree with you, uh, Rafael. It's, uh, it's a key issue that um, uh, needs to be addressed. Where is the history? Why, don't, why, why do we keep forgetting the history of this country? where we, we made many, many, many mistakes in the way we design, re, redesigned and designed and redressed. How can the North end up with 19 states? Just the cost of living, just the cost of governance is, is unbelievable. And it's the same everywhere. How do we end up with the kind of caliber and leadership that runs states in the Southeast today, for goodness sake? How can anybody say that the South-South um, the, the is being cheated um, by the Federation when they don't look at how the money that this goes to the South-South, all these huge amounts of money, directly and indirectly, who goes there? In whose pockets do this go, this money go? Where is the impact on ordinary Nigerians who, who live in the South-South? What happens to them? Dr. Baba Ahmed, we have uh, just about 10 minutes to go. Yeah. I want to see if we can still pack a little more uh, into this conversation before we run out of time. Two paragraphs in the communique that was issued after your meeting. Paragraph two, uh, while talking about the right of uh, political parties to choose their own candidates, says very clearly that uh, every northerner or northerners can aspire to any office uh, in the land. Is this an indication that the northern elders are uh, the northern leaders of thought rejected the idea of power shift at that meeting? And then paragraph four, the communique says, the planned census for 2022 should be postponed. Why should that be a problem? Because isn't that a big issue that we do not know how many we are? 
we have remained consistent on this issue of power shift. It's not power shift. The Nigerian federal system compels all politicians and the political process to be inclusive. Um, and, and, and we've never campaigned against uh, power shift. What we've campaigned against is a situation where people sit there and say, well, you must yield the right, your rights to us and become, and become spectators in, in the Nigerian federal system. That's not acceptable. We said, leave the democratic process to work, allow a wide uh, um, scope for parties to field their candidates, allow candidates, allow v voters to vote who they want, and, and then um, allow, allow uh, the, the rights of choice to determine who becomes president. If he comes from the north, fine, no problem. If he comes from the south, fine, no problem. But every Nigerian is going to participate in deciding who is the president. And all parties are going to decide who is going to be their candidate. Now, the day before the, uh, the meeting on January 15th, um, a group called the South South, the Middle Belt, and sat back again the usual way. Um, that's why we called it command uh, democracy. It's a very primitive way of doing things. We must, all parties must field only northern, southern candidates. And any party that fields a southern candidate will be rejected. <laughs> With due respect to those uh, elderly people, uh, one has to say, who, who do they think they are? How can you compel um, all parties to field only northern candidates at the risk of losing elections? All, all, all people in the, in, the, in the north would do is to say, okay, fine, let's see how, whether that will, that will happen. Under what law? Or under what, what pressure are you going to compel us to do this? It's not, going to, it's not on. That's why we said, allow parties, that's the right of parties to fill candidates, and all citizens should do that. So it's not that we're rejecting um, uh, zoning or um, uh, this thing that people keep saying, oh, you, it's, it must be, it must come there, it must be there. A southerner can become president of Nigeria, but it, it has to be the best candidate out of all the lot. A northerner can become president of the next, of the next, of Nigeria in 2023, but that's because he must be the best of the lot. We identified criteria for that. Now about the census, you said we don't have time. <clears throat> this is a very difficult time for the country. There are millions uh, of people in the northern part of the country running away from crime, running away displaced people, huge communities that have been emptied. Um, census is supposed to be a very, very important exercise. You don't want to do a census um, or, or, or when the population is so destabilized. It's not that the North is afraid of census. We have, we have no reason to fear census. We know, we know our numbers. We know um, where we stand in relation to the rest of the country, and we're not afraid of census. But you should not have a very, very important very sensitive exercise, so close to another exercise, which is the elections. That shouldn't be. If we want to count IDPs, it's not difficult. Why don't, the, why don't you go out and count IDPs? We are not, it's the issue is not that we don't know how many IDPs there are or non-IDPs. There are IDPs in Niger, in Chad, in Cameroon. It can be counted. That's not the issue. A national census counts everybody. You cannot count somebody who is running away um, a crime, organized crime, has eaten very deeply into uh, the life of the North, insurgency in the Northeast, banditry and kidnapping in the North. There are other threats to Nigerians other, outside, uh, outside the North. This is not the right, to, to do, the right time to do this. We have if nothing heard, against this. We I just heard. simply recommend it. Yes? So the chairman of yeah. the National Census Commission is assuring the public of a digital census which will have accurate assessment for a change. You recall the last census, what, 2006, we're past due for another one. It's supposed to be uh, what decennial exercise. So the next one should have been 2016. What's your argument against that? Mm. So why, why 2016? Well then why, why, why didn't you do have it? Why didn't, uh, this is the same administration that was in place in 2016. Why didn't they have it in 2016, 2017, 2018? 2019. No like the present. Why are they having it in 2020? Because it might actually yes, be useful that, going no, no, into no. the election. This is the worst season. possible time. Why? 
This is the election has nothing to do with census. This is the worst possible time under this administration or under any administration to say you are going to count people who need to be in place, whether it is digital or not, who need, to, uh, who need a stable environment, who need a, a, a manageable environment. This is the worst possible Can time. Can I come in here again? Census. An election of a, new, of a new administration yes, is actually quite a good time so that the next government can hit the ground running and have the data to accurately and properly plan for Nigeria. But I don't want this to become a back and forth. I also wanted to refer to a point on your communique because, yes, it was read that you, the northern elders or thought leaders are advocating for a structured welfare program to alleviate the poverty in the north. What do you envisage? What, can you give us some details on what that should look like? We want to see a situation where um, we, we, made, we made a number of recommendations. One is that the gov governments, federal and state, should revisit the 2020 budgets and reprioritize re um, uh, uh, spending on security, uh, defense and security, because that's very important. We believe it is severely underfunded. We believe that there are strategies that can actually limit the damage of kidnappers and bandits and insurgents, uh, but they need funding. Um, the, the, the desperate situation of people who are, move, who are chased away from villages, there are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of uh, IDPs in the Northwest. It's just that state governments and federal government are reluctant to admit that they are IDPs and they don't want to settle them down. These people need help. Uh, poverty, poverty is, 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 is fueling um, the uh, insecurity in, in the North. Uh, you must evolve policies that limit this. It's very important. If you don't do that, then there is no way you can fight okay. banditry okay. and kidnapping okay. Okay. to a point where it, it ceases to be a problem. Okay, so uh, Dr. Papahamed, then you just make the argument you need data to be able to know the number of people that are poor in the North to be able to help them. You need data for this welfare scheme, hence the need for a censor. So that's one argument. And the other argument, no. the other argument no. is you say because of insecurity in the North. Ah, Dr. Babahabed, don't forget that you have said insecurity is spread across every part of the country. So the Southeast too can complain that this is not the time for censor because they have sit at homes on Monday. Maybe if the enumerators they come should. on Monday, they wouldn't they see anybody. So, but that's, a lot of people say that's no argument. And lastly, on this, you said something, Joseph. You said you know the numbers. What are the numbers in the North? Because we keep saying, making this argument of the numbers, the numbers. What are these numbers, really? How can we crack them without a census? If you don't know them, we know them. What are they? If you don't know them, we know them. How did you get um, the facts? How did you get the stats? How we, empirical we, we are those numbers? We know our population. We know, we know them. Don't, don't, don't go there. Uh, we, we, when we make statements like this, we know what we're talking about. We don't need a census to know uh, our numbers. We, we may not be exact, but when we make these kind of statements, we know what we're talking about. You do not need a census to know how many IDPs exist. You don't need a census. To, if you want to count IDPs and displace people, you can count them. If you want to go to the Southeast, which you should, if the Southeast is worried about insecurity and they don't believe that a census will serve their interest, they should say the same thing we're saying. Don't do it now. Create a more conducive atmosphere that needs to be done. Now, I don't know what worries you, uh, if I, you you're worried about uh, the North using numbers and they, you don't like it when we use numbers. Unfortunately for you, this is a reality. We would not uh, sit on what we believe is, is a reality. The North has more population than the southern part of the country. It still does. Now, how much the, the, now, the how much difference it makes? Fine. What um, are the numbers? Go back. Go back. Go back and read the population. No, go back and put the, this is not a well, secret. How, how go and look at the population of the states. Go well, and, I don't have the population well, here, talk. but well. I know that the North has always had superior population figures in the South, and it, it hasn't changed. Well. So if you want us to have that discussion, we can have it another time. But uh, there is, there is not fiction. These are figures from the National Population Commission. I don't have them here. Uh, if you have them there, please tell me, compare the population of Kano with the population uh, of... Uh, of well, three or four states in the southeast, Dr. also Baba three or four Ahmed. states in the southeast. If you don't have them, no problem. <clears throat> Dr. Baba Ahmed, well, we seem to have. Yes, thank you, Ruben. We've run out of time. I was going to raise the point about the uh, leaders of thought saying, "Oh, they will go and see President Tebuari uh, to discuss the uh, condition 
uh, of the people in the north. Well, we will. Well, we hope he will see well, us. When he has, when it he has just a few months from the meeting. Yeah, but he has just a few months to go. Uh, that's it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyway, thank you very much, Dr. Baba Ahmed, for joining us.